Good morning, sir. Good morning. How are you? Under the circumstances, I'm doing pretty good. Good. Better than most, I like to think. Good. Sir, my name is Michael Anderson. I'm representing the Colorado Board of Parole. I will be uh, conducting your hearing for you today. I have information here that concerns you. You and I will go through it together. We'll do some verification on what it is that I have here. Uh, we'll do that together, and as we do, I'll be asking questions that, um, in most cases, if not all, I pretty much already have the answer to those questions, which makes it uh, more important for you to answer the questions, not only accurately, but in as much detail as possible. And of course, if you have any questions of your own, it's important that you uh, that you ask them. Okay. Okay. Today's date would be May twenty second, two thousand twelve. My name is Michael Anderson. I'm representing the Colorado Board of Parole. I'm at the uh, city and county of Denver, conducting application hearings for. Sterling Correctional Facility. And, sir, would you please state your full name and spell your last. Tim Jacobs, J-A-C-O-B-S. And, Mr. Jacobs, what's your DOC number? 122093. And, your uh, date of birth? 12883. Your, um, so you're 29 years old? Yes, sir, I am. Okay. And, sir, I show that you have a pro-eligibility date that's actually in front of us. It's uh, July 16th of 2012, and you have a mandatory release date of, looks like March 21st, 2023, with a five-year period of parole. Is that correct? Yes, sir, it is. All right. And um, are you married or single? I am single. And had you ever been married before? Uh, I got married in the county, but it was not consummated. So uh, I, I consider that no. Okay. And do you owe any restitution? I do, but I'm not exactly sure of the exact uh, exact amount. Do you have any children under the age of 18? None. And did you graduate high school? I did not. And what was the last grade level you completed in public school? In public school, I would like to say the 11th. Where'd you go? Uh, George Washington High School. Okay. Do you have a GED? Yes, sir, I do. Did you get that while incarcerated? No, sir, I got that in 2001 at uh, Emily Griffith. Why? Uh, basically, when, when I made the plans to drop out of high school, I made a pact with my mother that if I, if I was going to drop out, I would at least get my GD because I, I figured, you know, I was ready. I, I, I was knowledgeable already as it was. Incarceration is for a case out of El Paso County, uh, 2003. You pled guilty to a Class II felony and received a 22-year sentence for uh, first-degree murder. Is that correct? First-degree attempted murder. That would be correct. Okay. All right. Why did you plead guilty to that? 
intention to go out there and uh, actually shoot at this man and take his life. That, uh, that was my intention. Why? Well, it, it, it stems it stems deeper than I can really just break down. But I had I had been with Miss uh, Lori Bass, who was also involved in this case right here for about six months, and we were on in an off and off and on relationship. One night, I had happened to call her, and she passed the phone to somebody else, another man. It infuriated me. I had been drinking, and I and I just let my emotions get the best of me, man. I just I just just acted on raw emotions and made my way up to the springs. Okay. Um, just so I'm understanding this, was there... Um, Someone hit and the result of no, no, shooting no, was ever hit. But but see, since my intention was to go up there, that that's how I why I, I pled guilty to the, the attempt to murder. Cause my intention, I'm not I'm not even gonna lie. My intention was to go up there and uh, cause I had, I was infuriated on the phone and I told him I was on my way up there. If he was there when I got there, I'd carry out this action and the action I did carry out. And you know I've, I've thought about this for the last nine years and I've regretted it ever since. It was. I just, I just thought I, uh, just didn't use rational thinking. So, how many times had you been to prison? I've never been to prison. This is my first time, my first incarceration. Tell me about your uh, your last COPD was um, in March of 2010. What was that all about? I had brought back some stuff from the kitchen, some starch, and a, a little bit of bread mix that I was intending to sell in the, in the pod, which was a real stupid thing of me. I'll be the first to admit that. Okay. And uh, that was a couple of years ago, how have you managed to stay out of trouble since that time? Oh, easily. So I made my mind up. There's there's no if, ands, or buts. I, I just I, I caught a lot of COPD convictions when I first came down, and I didn't realize how big of an impact that would have against me and holding me in here. You know, I really should have seen you about a year and a half ago, sir, and uh, through all these COPD convictions I got when I first came down, I see the impact on me. I, I, this, this, this is not for me right here. This, 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 this existence right here in this penitentiary is not for me. So I made my mind up that there's no way I'm getting any kind of COPDs. I'm trying to get out of here as soon as possible. County did you want to parole to? I would like to go back to Denver. That, that's where I'm originally from. Can how will you sustain yourself financially? Well, right now I have uh, two two employers that are willing to pick me up. One being Rocky Mountain Laptops, and the other one being NWP uh, Productions as a construction uh, laborer. I have two jobs lined up for me right now, and once I once I get my my uh, employment secure. I know I have no problems. So there, there's no if, ands, or buts if I'm going to go out here and be successful or not. I just, just need to get out of here. Okay. Is there anything else you would like me to know or understand as to why uh, I should parole you? Yeah, yes, sir. There definitely is. Uh, basically, what this comes down to is when I committed these, these crimes right here, I was a 20-year-old child. My understandings of life were even more immature than my age. And uh, right now, sincerely, sincerely, I am, I'm ready to go out here and make some of myself. I'm, I'm ready to be responsible for myself. I'm ready to close this chapter in my life, and I'm ready to start a new chapter in my life. Worlds away from this penitentiary. This, this is a meek existence, and this is, this is not for me right here. 
right now, as I sit in front of you right now, I'm 29, and I'd like to believe that you know, I've matured and I became responsible in many, many ways. And uh, there's many facets of life that I can take part of now that you know, I, I really believe in myself without a doubt that I can make some of myself this time around. And I'm ready. That, that's uh, you know, my upbringing, my culture. I've, I've seen where I went wrong, and I see the ethics that I had myself based upon when I came in here at 20 were all the way out of whack. Now that I sit in front of you right now, my understanding is a life have just been crisp, and I know I know I have a road of success ahead of me, and I'm just waiting for the opportunity, sir. That's I'm just praying that this opportunity comes around because I'm gonna make the most of it, and I can guarantee that. that that's all I have to say. All right, you should know that I have two support letters here for you. Thank you. Yeah, I do. Thank you. All right. Is there anything else? I'm just ready, sir. That's it. I'm ready, I'm ready to go. All right. I'll make a decision today. I'll let the uh, case manager know what I decide. He'll advise you as he has an opportunity, okay? All right. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Well, thank you. I'll be right with you, Jim. All right. We're muted out. <coughs> Okay. Um, oh, glasses. He said that when he committed this crime, he made up his mind and he was going to go kill this man. And then five minutes later, he turned around and said he made up his mind to be a better person. I don't feel he was remorseful. I, I didn't even hear a, I may have passed by, I didn't hear a, I'm sorry for committing these. Um, I was on drugs. I've been better. I've done better. I don't know if he's gotten any programs. Um, I assume a COPD is when it's so not. Um, from what I saw, it was little write-ups, starch, tattooing, those type of things. Um, he said he went to kill this man. He didn't say sorry for it. Um, he said all he wants is out. I didn't hear of anything like a bigger plan. I just feel that he just wants to get out. Because, you know, of course prison's not a good place. Everybody doesn't want to be in there. I don't feel he was sorry for anything he did. And okay. Um, else? Hmm? Okay. I'll let Martha know what I decide, and she'll let you know when she can. Okay. Okay. Right. Is that today or later? Interesting. Okay, let's go ahead and have you check out and then you can just go. Okay. So did it, it is this usually I don't know how this works. Okay. You tell me about the results, but I'm gonna tell you out here, okay? Just put it there and then put, just put your time out right by your name there. He said that he's denying him parole, he told me. Okay? 10, 11. And uh, he'll see the parole board again in 2014. Oh, okay. Years. All right, so two years. Okay? Okay. All right. Thank you okay. so You're much. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. I thank never you. had to do one of these. It was.
so nerve wracking. You, you can take the elevator to the first floor and go out the, um, the you know, ground level. Mm -hmm. Just make sure the outside door is all the way closed. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank all right, you thank so you. much. All right, Sylvia. Talk to you later. Thank you. Bye bye. Denied, baby.